But what I discovered is the crazy cycle. When a wife feels unloved, hmm. she tends to react in a way that feels disrespectful to her husband. Wow. We have to ask ourselves, am I married to a person of basic goodwill? You know, whatever the last words of someone dying, what they say is most important. And if you get this, you're going to be okay in your marriage. This is the game plan. And the University of Washington studied 2,000 couples for 20 years, and they said, we now know the two key ingredients for successful marriages. So how do I get my wife to do what I want? <laughs> and vice versa. Folks, you've tuned into the right video. This is it on the Seven Fear Squad coming at you right now. What's cracking, everybody? My name is Spark Guy Matt Zapala here, hailing to you from the PHP Olympiad 2020 event here in San Antonio, Texas. Here with my good friend and business partner, Rodolfo Vargas from Houston, Texas, and the author of Love and Respect. A 20 year uh, now a best seller yes. type of book. Yeah. 20 years work, Dr. Emerson, Emerson Egerich out of uh, Michigan, mm -hmm. which we realized. So I'm excited to have a discussion. Two married guys, and uh, for those of you dating right now or uh, engaged, this episode is for you to get most out of your relationship. So, Dax, thank you so hey, much for being our guest you. speaker. Thank you. Thank, thank you for you. coming. Yeah. Oh, I'm honored. Yes, Very it was excited. like uh, five years ago, something like that, the first time I read the book. And uh, you have no idea how much you have helped so many couples in the company, people that we know, people at church. So, can you remind us about the scripture that the book talks about, yes, that yes. everybody has to know about that scripture? Yes, yes, well, most would say that a book in the Bible called Ephesians and the fifth chapter is considered the greatest treatise in the New Testament on marriage. And the summary, it'd be like, you know, if my father was on, my, on his deathbed, he said, Emerson, come close, son, listen to me. You know, whatever the last words of someone dying, what they say is most important. It's almost like Abba Father is saying, come close, church, listen to me. Wow. These are my last words. And if you get this, you're going to be okay in your marriage. You really will be okay. You're going to have troubles at times, but you're going to be okay. And there we read that a husband must love his wife and a wife must respect her husband. Now, there's no controversy about the first part. <laughs> it's always but about when, the second but part. But when we talk about that second part, women say, well, Dr. Emerson, respecting my husband, uh, you don't want to be a hypocrite. I'm not going to do what I don't feel. He's not superior to me. I'm not inferior to him. He has to earn it. He, he, he hasn't deserved it. I'm not going to feed his ego. It's all about his narcissism. I'm certainly not going to give him license to do what he wants to do. I'm not going to return to male patriarchy. I'm not going to uh, subject myself to emotional abuse. I'm not going to. I'm not going to do these things. But yeah. Uh, but other than those things, I'm really open to hearing what you have to say about this. And uh, that's been the response. Women are not mean-spirited, but what you and I serve and die for honor. We are highly motivated by unconditional respect toward our spirit. We give unconditional positive regard toward our spirit. We don't like our behavior always. We don't respect mm -hmm. bad behavior, but we never show contempt toward the spirit of a man, unless you want an enemy. Right. And so what I discovered is that a woman, by and large, needs love, though she needs respect. And a man needs to feel respected for who he is apart from his performance. And the Bible is revealing that. The question on the table is, what does that look like? And uh, we can address that. But what I discovered is the crazy cycle. When a wife feels unloved, hmm. she tends to react in a way that feels disrespectful to her husband. Wow. That's what happens. It's within her nature to appear that way. That's not her intent. And when we feel dis, we tend to react in a way that feels unloving to her. And this creates the crazy cycle. Without love, the crazy cycle. she reacts without respect. Without respect, he reacts without love. Without love, she reacts without respect. Without respect, he reacts without love. Without love, and it starts spinning in couples of goodwill. There isn't evil will. We didn't marry Hitler's distant cousin, did we? I don't think we did. <laughs> and we start spinning. Does this make sense? And yeah. it's based on Ephesians 5.33 that you wow. referenced. Wow, it's, it's funny that you mentioned that because when that cycle, because I, you get a reference in your book, I I'm, 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 was discussing with, with Gina, I said, listen, when we get into a fight, like we, we start picking fights at each other and it gets worse and it gets worse. Escalates. It, gets, it, it escalates. And it's a cycle you talk about in the book. Yes. And so, so if we find ourselves in that cycle. As a man, what yes. can we do better to take charge of that moment and say, yes. you know, let's let's de-escalate the situation, let's get yes. out of this yes. cycle, let's get towards progress versus probably saying something that we might regret. Yes, no, excellent question, and that really is the key, because no one talks to us the way our wives will talk to us, <laughs> right? And so from our experience, <laughs> yes, she's, correct. she's being disrespectful. You're right. And, and, and you'll hear guys say, she picks a fight. She's, pick, <laughs> she's picking a fight. Well, that's because if a guy talked to us that way, 
he's picking a fight. Right. But the question on the table is this mother of your children, this woman who nurtures you and cares for you, is she really picking a fight? Or is she actually trying to connect? Is she confronting to control? Or is she confronting because she's feeling insecure Ooh, and needing reassurance? But what happens in the crazy cycle, when she reacts, it appears disrespectful. There isn't any question, any man watching your wife at that time, she's dissing him. Look at that, can't believe it. Or is she crying out, I'm feeling insecure, you just said or did something that felt unloving to me, and I'm coming at you aggressively because I need reassurance that you love me. Right. And how do we decode that? Because it's difficult, because physiologically, and they've done research on this, during the crazy cycle moments, our heartbeats get to 99 beats per minute. We're in warrior mode. Hmm. So if we don't disengage and calm down, right. that will escalate. Right. Now the woman looks like she's out of control. We look like we're stoic as we sit there, like we're just cool, calm, and collected. We're right. actually in warrior mode. They've monitored this. Wow. She looks like she's out of control. Her heartbeats are normal. Wow. That's because when I say to Sarah, Sarah, I'm sorry, will you forgive me? Immediately she softens. So that's, that's the word, I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. Well, given that it's right. you're genuine, but right. a lot of times a man is trying to do the honorable thing by de-escalating this, so why should I apologize for doing something that's honorable on the heels of your disrespect? Uh. You just so we don't see it, yeah, we don't right. see it. Yeah. But if we were to say, I'm sorry for appearing unloving, I'm not trying to be unloving, I'd die for you if you don't kill me first, you know? I'm not, I'm sorry, <laughs> I, I, can we take a 10 minute break here while I calm down? I am truly sorry, I, but I need to calm down and then we will revisit this. Watch what happens in the spirit of that woman. Really? Oh, wow. she'll soften, given that she senses that's authentic. Now, yeah. given that we, she feels manipulated, but if she senses sincerity, okay. But we've gotta be a man of integrity. Once things calm down, we have a tendency to say, it's good to go, we don't need to talk about it now. She's not gonna feel that way. So if she becomes confident, then in 10, 15 minutes, we'll revisit that. Watch her spirit soften immediately. And, and then and she'll usually say, I'm sorry too, I shouldn't have said that. I was horrible, I shouldn't have said that. Wow. It's axiomatic in the literature where women will say I'm sorry on the heels of someone authentically saying I'm sorry. Listen to women talk to themselves all the time. They're saying I'm sorry all the day long. I'm sorry, oh I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Well I'm sorry, well I'm sorry too. I should Watch how they speak and learn from that. Wow. You know what, this is so interesting because they don't teach us this. Nobody knows. I mean, didn't they teach us this? In, I mean, in high school, they taught us you know, financial <laughs> literacy, how to invest our money, how to get a mortgage, Finance, right? and how to, how to date the right person. Yes. They did all that stuff in school. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, so I have a question. Let's just say, because they, I'm in the video, but what if, let's just say, the man didn't grow up in this loving environment. Correct. So he didn't see um, these kisses or love or affection, and he doesn't know how to express the love. Right, what would you recommend right. to somebody? Well, first of all, I always I know men are men are honored. If he's the, if he's a man of goodwill, and I believe that he is, and every man watching this and part of your organization is a goodwilled man. So you may not be this affectionate, loving, you know, a romantic type guy. It's kind of like we feel uncomfortable with that. I wrote the book Love and Respect. I don't feel comfortable with that. Most men are not as sentimental or as sensitive or as romantic. But what we are is we're men of honor. And as men of honor, we can do the loving thing even if we don't always feel it. So as a man of honor, when this conflict happens and he's thinking, you know, I don't know how to do this love thing, as a man of honor, just ask yourself, is that which I'm about to say or do gonna sound or feel loving to her or not? I don't have to feel the love, but as an honorable man, can I do the loving thing? Do I have enough intestinal fortitude? Do I have enough guts to do the honorable thing here on the heels of what feels like contempt and disrespect for me? And especially if you know in your deepest heart she's not trying to diss you, she's actually trying to connect to you because she needs something that only you can meet. You have a strength that only you can meet. Wow. And she's turning to you in that fit because she expects you to decode that. There isn't a man on the planet that naturally decodes that. <laughs> so don't beat yourself up on that, but you're gonna have to discern just like I do and, and my brothers here have to, is she really intending to emasculate you so you can sing high-pitched tenor in the boys' choir? Is she really trying to do that or is she trying to connect with you because you matter to her? Her problem is she doesn't know how to approach you. Her heart's in the right place. Her methodology is not healthy. So the question on the table is, can you be that honorable man who does the loving thing, one of which would say, I'm sorry, I'm not trying to pick a fight, I know you're not, can we calm down here for a second and let's talk about it, but only for 15 minutes I want yeah, to talk about yeah, it, yeah, not yeah. for 15 hours. And ladies, if he comes back in 15 minutes, Sarah and I have a rule of engagement, I'll come back in 15 minutes, but she only talks about it for 15 minutes. She doesn't go, and one more thing. Right. <laughs> That's interesting to say, so there's a lot of our uh, business partners in, in our company that have their wife working together with them, boyfriend, yes. girlfriend, fiancés. Yes. And so, you know, one of the things that we see a lot is because business has a tendency, especially if we're working in business every day together, 
has a tendency to accelerate a lot of arguments because we're we're not separate for eight hours a day like normal couples. Correct. Uh, well, we call that normal, whatever. Yeah, we're we're yeah. normal, right? But right. Uh, but we're working together. We're at the office every day. You know, we're, we're, we're in these issues. So the joke between Sheena and I is that we've been married for going on five years now, but we have 20 years of arguments. Yes, yes, about. yes. The good part is we're still together. But I think there's a lot there's a lot of improvement that we can still make in terms of uh, conflict resolution because sometimes conflict, you can be mad at each other all day and nothing gets done in your business. So what's some of the tips and suggestions that you might have for us men to operate better with our wives, our spouses, our girlfriends? Right. That is beneficial to our business to de-escalate conflict. Yes. Well, you have two issues in conflict. You have the issue on the table, okay. whatever it may be. You've got some business decision that needs to be made and you have an honest difference of opinion on which way you should go. So you're gonna have an honest difference of opinion. It's gonna create a conflict. Mm -hmm. And you've gotta come up with a creative alternative, a third option. There's gotta be some kind of win-win solution. Right. That's an issue in and of itself. But what happens when we get into those moments, if I start coming across to Sarah, and we've been working together in love and respect, she's vice president, I'm president, and as I said, I decided to make all the major decisions the last 20 years, and she's decided to make all the minor decisions. And we haven't had a major decision in 20 years. <laughs> I say to Sarah, is, is this a major decision? No, this is minor. Is this a major? No, this is minor. But, so then we have this conflict. What happens if I come across to her in an unloving way, even though I'm not intending to, mm -hmm. and if she comes across to me in a disrespectful way, right. even though she's not intending to, right. if two people don't discern how they appear, yeah. if we really do not discern when I'm angry, I'm upset, at a certain point, the issue is no longer the issue. Right. Now Sarah's feeling that I'm unloving. How, why do you treat me so unlovingly when we disagree? Got She's it. gonna say that. Right. Or she may even say, you're being disrespectful, but if I continue to be disrespectful, she'll say, how can you say you love me and treat me disrespectfully? She'll almost always land on love. Whereas men tend to know that their wives love them. We don't, when she's upset with us, we don't usually doubt that she loves us unless she's having an affair. It's because she doesn't like me. She doesn't respect me at this moment. So we're reacting to that. And so she needs to ask herself, in this heated moment over an honest difference of opinion, am I coming across to my husband in a way that causes him to feel disrespected and belittled and that you have a sense of disgust toward who he is? Because if you do, you, neither one of you are gonna connect here. Right. And so two people have to understand those two dynamics. Wow. What is the issue on the table that mm -hmm. has to be resolved as two shrewd business people? But now you've got that deeper issue, the crazy cycle. And if you don't understand the power of the crazy cycle, you're gonna be frustrated all day long with each other and think you're arguing over the issue on the table when really you could solve that probably in 10 minutes. Wow. But so, now you don't like each other because this heated fellowship has yeah. ensued. What's some of the basic ways that men, husbands, boyfriends can come unloving to their wives? Well, we don't see it because okay. we're not trying to be unloving. Okay. I mean, we would literally die for her. One guy said to his wife, I love you so much I would die for yeah, you. Yeah, of course. And she said, oh, Harry, you keep saying that, but you never do. Mm. That's, no, a, that's a, that's that, a, that, that's a, that's a joke, joke, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. People, most crowds that, laugh. That's a cycle. Yeah, that, that is that, a cycle. That's, that's, that's right. You never do. That's right. That's going to end pretty quick. But I think, again, <laughs> it's decoding. What can a man do? What can a man do? You've got to decode. We've got to decode that her intent is not to diss us. Okay. Now, she's talking to us in a way that no one does. So it's normal for us to feel disrespected because who talks to us this way? <laughs> It, this is what we have to get in tune with, it's called decoding. Is she really intending to be disrespectful? Or if I was to say, look, I reacted too strong there, I am sorry, I, I need to calm down. Watch her say, well, I shouldn't have reacted to you either, I'm sorry. It's almost axiomatic, I'll say it again. If you enter that authentically, women are not interested in continuing to have conflict. They don't want conflict, they don't like that. But they will then respond, they don't want to be on top, they just want that harmony. So when we get humble, they will reciprocate. It's almost predictable given that she's got good will. So one of the things a man has to do is first of all say, is she really trying to be uh, disrespectful toward me? Are we on the crazy cycle because she's really trying to diss, diss me or did I come across in a way that I can justify all day long? I didn't intend to be unloving. I can justify, you know, and rationalize. You know what rationalize means? What does that mean? Rational lies. Rational uh -huh. lies, L-I-E-S. Yeah, exactly. So I can, I can convince myself all day long wow. with Sarah, I'm not trying to be unloving. What do you mean I'm unloving? You know, I can, I can convince myself I'm not. But what I have to do is give Sarah the benefit of the doubt. Is she a good-willed woman who really cares about me? She's gonna be next to me when I'm in my wheelchair with a stroke. They are the caregivers, they are the nurturers. She's just not gonna go away. Yeah. And so that woman is fully devoted. Is she a good-hearted individual? She's coming across in a way that nobody does, but I've gotta decode. She's not trying to do that. And would it hurt me to say, all right, I gotta calm down. Let me just calm down here for a second. I shouldn't react. I wish I was like Christ. I wish I was perfect. I say to Sarah, I wish I could walk on water. I wish I could be like Jesus, but I'm not. Will you forgive me for that? She'll almost 99% of the time reciprocate by saying, well, 
Okay. Yes. They just move on very quickly. Oh. Watch women among women when they they'll vent and this. Well, I'm sorry. I'm, well, I'm sorry too. And then they're good to go. They hug. Yeah, right, and, right. Right. <laughs> you know what's crazy? So we're talking about the couples now. Correct. Right. The husband and wife. But sometimes we have the relationship in our in our in our in our business. Yes. That you might you might have a manager that is a woman. Exactly. You might have a manager that is a guy. So they, can we use the same concept yes. for 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 not necessarily husband and wife, but for partners? How to how does a woman talks to a guy that works with That's her? That's right. And vice versa. What, what other Excellent ideas? question. Excellent question. And Sarah, my wife says God made us male and female, not husband and wife. And those dynamics wow. remain true. Uh, right now, Media, which is wow. uh, an organization that I did a two-part series on love and respect in the business, and you wow. might want to check it out. Right now, Media, love check and respect in business, and but that very dynamic. I had two men. One had a hundred women under him. Another man had a hundred women under him. And this one came to me and he said, "Women are quitting on me right and left, but no one quits on this guy." And I said, "I just have one question: Does he write carrying notes about their children, their teenage?" Son? Yeah, he's writing notes all the time. He communicated that he cares about the things that are on that woman's heart. Those women are loyal; they'll never quit. Wow. He kept saying, "But I got you an insurance policy. I got you this. I got you that." Get but his house. attitude, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But the attitude that he had, yeah. he was losing the women. So if I come across lovingly with good motives, you know, we're not talking about hustling women. We're yeah. talking about being a loving man who cares about people. Women respond to that like no, and they'll go into the, they'll go in the powder puff room together. I wonder how he treats his wife. <laughs> That's what they're going to talk about relationships all day long, right? The flip side, a woman who's trying to prove herself as a manager and she's dissing the men under her, you're going to lose those men's heart. But I've seen great women who honor these men, understand this, and those men will literally die. Mm -hmm. I had a colonel, female colonel in the Marines, who left the Marines for one reason. She so honored the men under her that whenever they were in enemy territory and they came under fire, everybody enveloped her. Well, to take the hit, and she said, I was putting them in harm's way. They were so loyal to me that every one of them were going to die for me. The bullets were coming up through the helicopter, men were laying down, they were getting on top of me. I was little. She said, I'm five foot three. But I knew how to honor men. But I left because I knew I would be instrumental in some of their deaths. Wow. I, that was one of the most powerful emails. Huge. So I say to ladies, if you're in a management position, you're not losing power if you honor the man. Now, in my book, Love and Respect, I talk about what that looks like. But don't be afraid of saying something that's respectful to that male and watch what happens in response. Anyway, so let's talk about love and respect on social media. Yes. Because <laughs> I think sometimes with social media text messages you that a lot of things are misinterpreted. Here we are as guys, we're just posting something or commenting on something and it completely disrupts uh, the day because it gets back to her or she sees it. So what can we do about that to prevent? So uh, explain when your wife sees something that you've posted on oh, yeah, social media. Yeah, we can, we can uh, you know, you know, subconsciously we po post something. It's no big deal as to guys, her? or just in general. Okay. Yeah, we post something in just in general about family, about sports, about you know, whatever the case may be, and the kids, and uh, and sometimes it, it may spike or be misinterpreted wrong. Yes. Yes. Uh, well, I mean, communication. Uh, via social media is very important. As I mentioned to you earlier, I wrote a book called Before You Hit Send. Harper Collins asked me to write this book. And Socrates said, before you speak, ask this question. Is it true? Is it kind? Is it necessary? And I added one, is it clear? Because I thought I did all those three and people were still saying, what did you just say? <laughs> I don't even understand what you're saying. So is it true? Is it kind? Is it necessary? Is it clear? And those four questions are very simple, straightforward, and really guard us against what often are innocent mistakes. If we make, our wives are very sensitive and a lot of times they want to guard us. They think we came across in a way that didn't represent our deepest heart. So she mothers us. Mm. There's that dimension. And mm. I don't know if that's where that critique is coming. If I just think you didn't say that well and I think people are going to misinterpret what you meant by that. I mean, there's that motherly uh, element and it kicks in yeah. and they will mother us. Yeah. And we say, I've got one mother, I don't need another. <laughs> you know, I mean, they're, they're, but you have to get in tune again with motive. We have to ask ourselves, am I married to a person of basic goodwill? And if they're making those statements out of goodwill, even though I'm feeling like they're correcting me that I did it wrong, then we have to make sure that we don't suddenly make them the bad person when they're trying to serve us. Now there's that component. I don't know if I'm sure. itching where yeah, you're yeah, scratching. Yeah. Yep. What a powerful yeah. response. Yeah. And by the way, what about to go and uh, listen to you and uh, yeah. everybody's so excited yeah. to hear from you. I, I'm, I'm telling you, this book and this message more people need to hear it. Ah. Marriage, business, social media, yeah. schools, yeah. more people need to understand this concept about love and respect. Yes, I, yes. I, got, I got one more question because... Well, we let have... me make one comment to oh, keep sure, that sure, question. Sure. Yeah. Those of you who are watching on the crazy egg, without love, she reacts without respect, without respect, he reacts without love. Here's the number one mistake we all make. You go to your wife, woman, I know why I'm so unloving. 
because you're so disrespectful. The crazy cycle explains it. If you would stop dissing me, I'd be loving. Mm. Big mistake for wow. wives. The reason I'm so disrespectful is because you're so unloving. What we end up doing is holding the other person responsible for this. So let me just give you a word of caution. Don't blame your spouse for your negative reaction. So, your, your response is your responsibility. Mm. Now, everything in me fights against that, just as I know it is. <laughs> I want to blame Sarah every day. I want to blame Sarah. She's even chased me around the house with my book saying, what would you say to a husband who's treating his <laughs> wife the way you're treating your right line? I said, no, I, I just write about this. I don't reply. I said, <laughs> okay, so there's this tendency to blame. May I just caution you, it's not gonna work. Not any more than if they blame you, right? Uh, okay, so let's just be on the same team as honorable, loving individuals. But your question, excuse yeah, me. Yeah, right, sorry. right, and that's very good. So before people get married, I mean, is there some tips, strategies, ideas, and thoughts, ways to filter before you think about considering marriage as a person? Yes. Because things are pretty much flagged or identified while you're dating. How do you make sure you're dating the right person as it relates to love and Well, respect? I think sometimes the red flags people don't pay attention to, okay. and I think that's a very important distinction. But the game plan, I believe, is love and respect. I, uh, Tom Coffin, when he was the uh, coach of the New York Giants, had me come speak to the whole team and coaches. It was a game plan genius, and we talked about game plans. Well, and I thought well, later, God has given us his game plan. You know, there isn't much written in the scripture about to the pre-married. Several things are mentioned, but uh, one day I said, Lord, why have you not spoken to the premier? Because I want the premier to know what I said to the married. This is the game plan. And the University of Washington studied 2,000 couples for 20 years, and they said, we now know the two key ingredients for successful marriages, love and respect. And it was gender specific. The women lean toward the love side. Men lean toward the re respect side. Well, God said that 2,000 years ago in Ephesians 5.33, that a husband is to love. So a guy out there that's dating, if you just think, what does it mean to come across as a, a man who's an honorable man, but what does it mean for me to come across in a way that feels loving to the woman in my life? And you are a very nurturing, caring, loving woman. But when you're upset, you don't appear respectful. You know you're doing the loving thing, but what does it mean to come across respectful to a man without you feeling you're forsaking the feminist team? Without you feeling that you're losing power? Could this really empower you? Truth will carry its own weight. So you don't have to get disrespectful to motivate him to be loving. <laughs> You can't use unholy means to achieve worthy ends. And gentlemen, you can't be unloving to teach that woman to respect me. It ain't gonna happen. So we have to then come to that moment where we say, this is God's game plan, and what do I need to learn to be able to be that loving, respectful person? Because I'll tell you this, if you can learn that, you're going to be okay, as we said earlier. You're gonna be okay in your relationship. Is there some protocols? Like, uh, you know how people, Sometimes I get into a fight, and uh, then I find out what we were fighting. I forgot about it. Exactly. But is there some protocols that couples, that successful couples, marriages, they right. use? Right. Like, for example, have you heard, don't go to bed. Right. Yes. Angry. Angry. Yeah. Uh, don't go into a fight more than five hours. You know, yes. is there some yes. protocols? That yes. They, that well, one of the things that I encourage people to do is one of you needs to remind yourself that your ally is not enemy, that we are allies, not enemies, that you have goodwill, I have goodwill. I just don't like you right now, and I'm wondering why I married you. We're going to have those moments. But you've got to make sure that you don't suddenly become enemies and you're going to nuke the other person. When we get upset, our family of origin affects us and we start defaulting to some of those behaviors we saw in our mother and father. And they didn't work with your mom and dad and they're not going to work with you and your spouse isn't going to awaken. So one of the things that Sarah and I are big on, remind each other you got goodwill, that you're allies. Now we're not, we're, we're upset with each other, but we're, we're friends here, even though I don't like you. But you've got to remind each other we have goodwill. But there are all kinds of things that I'll talk about in the presentation today. I talk about the 80-20 rule, that 1 Corinthians 7, 28 says, if you marry, you've not sinned, but you will have trouble. That every couple will have trouble. And I say, it's kind of like 20% of the time, you're gonna have tension. Don't be frightened of that. You've got to have what I call a holy word view, not the Hollywood view. The Hollywood view is 99% perfection. The holy word view is 80%. And that 19% difference, if you don't accept that, it's going to disillusion you and embitter you, and it's going to then poison the 80%. So roll with those storms. Roll with those troubles. It's okay. Just relax. You're going to get on the crazy cycle. Sarah and I get on the crazy cycle every week, but we know how to jump off. Don't freak out as though somehow you made a mistake in marrying this person. And certainly don't use the D word. You know. oh, exactly. Never. I don't know what yeah. the D word is. Yeah. It's not an option. Yeah. <laughs> That's, right. That's right. Cool. Excellent. I Good. thought you had a perfect marriage. I, I thought you had a perfect marriage. Right? <laughs> I mean, we all know Doc has got a perfect marriage. That's, yeah, that's, that's right. for sure. That's right, yeah. So, oh, yeah. Uh, cool. Well, that, that being said, you good? Yes, thank awesome. you for coming. Very thank good. You. Oh, no. That being said, by the way, if you guys have been watching this and getting a lot of value from this, here's what I would encourage you to do make sure you drop your comments below. I help you understand your crazy cycle too as well. I'm sure we identified our crazy cycle too as well, but if you are most frequent commenter on our YouTube 
uh, video here while you're watching this episode, and you share this video with your friends and family. We want to make sure we single out a random person that does that. We want to give you, we've been uh, having uh, Dr. Uh, Emerson here sign some books here. We want to give you a signed copy from Dr. Emerson Egrich here from him to you. If you're the one dropping your comments below, engaging our community and sharing us what you think and your progress as well as you sharing this video too as well. So and I would offer a free gift on our loveandrespect.com, L-O-V-E-A-N-D-R-E-S-P-E-C-T.com. There's a 15 day plan, it's free. There's seven emails I'll send you. Uh, the first beginning with tone. And what research has pointed out, it's as simple as tone. What gets me in trouble with Sarah is my tone. Mm. Wow. It's as simple as that. Simple as that. But there are seven things I'll share with you that can really jumpstart your marriage and just really re-inspire and invigorate you. Awesome. Excellent. Uh, we'll drop that link below here too as well. Doc, I appreciate you coming to our convention here, our events, you, and being our keynote speaker here and talking about this very important topic. Because here, we're just not here to create people that make million bucks, right? We're not here just to create multimillionaires. We're here to create better fathers. We're here to create better husbands, better wives, better daughters, better sons, better nieces and nephews, and better citizens, and most more importantly, better families. So with that being said, thanks for tuning in. This is the Seven Figure Squad. I'm your most smart guy. If you have done so already, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. Click the notification to be alerted next time we upload our next episode. So therefore, you can check out our content as we continue our journey to 15,000 subscribers. So on behalf of Rodolfo, Dr. Emerson Egrich, I'm your money smart guy. Thanks for tuning in. And until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today.